So here you have across the entire marketplace, mortgage lenders and realtors constantly telling the public, hey, marry the house and date the rate. You can divorce it later. So the buyer comes in, they're paying thousands of dollars more per month in some cases to buy these houses when effectively all the money that these payments is basically covering the mortgage which when you first get a mortgage, all the money goes to the bank. It's all interest, 90% plus, meaning you're renting money. But not only are you renting money, you're paying way more than the guy next door who's renting the same house. But then all of the while, a year, maybe two down the road, the buyer finds out that, oh, surprise, I can't divorce my rate just yet. I might be in this thing for many years to come for an interest rate that I had no interest keeping for much, much longer. You add a bump in the road to all of that and the buyer can't afford the house and you see the next mortgage catastrophe spelling itself out in real time. Change is coming, my fellow Americans. You will own nothing and you will be happy. Lies, lies, and more lies, folks. Welcome back to the channel. As I reflect back on the fact that right now we are in a time where I am reading online that some of the strongest, most successful mortgage and real estate agents that have done very well for themselves in the history of their careers of 10, 15 years of being in the business literally were brought to tears in the past year because if you weren't aware, we had a record fall off in sales. And if you're in a business and real estate, you have to be selling property. You need transaction to transaction to actually make a living because in these industries, folks, they don't get a check on Friday like everybody else. Think of this, folks. The volume was so low in 2023. The last time it was that low, Bill Clinton was president and the population in the US, obviously the field of opportunity for these real estate transactions take place. There was way less when we sold as many homes as we sold in 2023. We have a greater population and a lot less sales and all of that wreaks havoc on an industry that is absolutely needing transactions and commissions and loans to charge money on because when those don't happen, people start to get stressed. And folks, we know the narrative, whether you are in Maine or you're in Washington, California or Florida, was all different as to why the marketplace struggled in 2023. The real estate industry at large really blamed it on two things. They said, hey, you know what? Interest rates are out of control. The Federal Reserve Chairman just keeps pushing those rates and he's destroying the economy. And the opposing headline on the other side from the real estate industry was just, there's no real estate for sale. There's no inventory and no inventory leads to no sales. Even though the fact remains folks that just back in 2021, there was way less inventory than we had last year but there was a lot more sales. But the truth remains, there is definitely a lack of inventory through a lot of the states in the country, where many states across the country are still down half of what they were back before the market was quote unquote normal, and there wasn't all this funny money, cheap cash, low interest rate activity that really set the market ablaze and crushed inventory levels. But folks, we already know there's many states in the union that have their inventory back yet their buyer activity is well off. And if you've spent any time on my channel, you know that Florida is a case study for that. And I've proved it out time and time again because we're leading the nation in inventory growth and we don't have an inventory problem. We're bumping along nearly pre-pandemic levels right now, but our demand for housing is off and the amount of properties closing is off. And we're not absorbing the homes that are coming to the market at a pace that is reducing inventory. It's, it's actually staying static or growing on a month over month basis over the past four or five months. And Florida suffers in 2024 for the same reasons it suffered in 2008 and 9, and that is the fact that investors threw gas on the fire through the peak markets of 2004, 5, and 6, just like they did in 2021 and 22 here in Florida again. But folks, when interest rates become untenable, as I've told you before, this whole thing starts to slow down and enter the creativity of the marketplace to create more transactions where things are for lack of a better term, kind of dead. Investors interested in flipping is fewer and farther between. Forget buying a house at today's mortgage rates and actually renting it out for a profit. That includes the decimation and the massive inventory growth that we're seeing in the short-term rental market. Told you on the last video that short-term rental market demand is down to seven-year lows. And folks, that's affected many markets in Florida in a big way and many of the similar markets like that throughout the country. So when you think about it, folks, all of this has created a crisis of sorts to all of those that are living off the real estate industry. To make matters worse, many in my own field aren't the greatest with their money. You see it on their social media accounts. You see a lot of realtors that when times are good, they elevate their standard of living while they live on commission. They don't have a contract for this kind of income that they made in 2021 
but there's an assumption that it just goes on forever. And folks, when it dries up, you start to see those cars being put back on the market and you see a whole lot of new boat ads boats for sale on Facebook Marketplace as a result. Now to combat all this, everybody starts to get creative. They start thinking of new phrases and slogans to bring buyers mindset into the marketplace again, even though interest rates are still between 6.8 and maybe 7.5%, depending on your credit profile. And realtors and mortgage lenders, when they actually get a new buyer and the buyer goes through and pre-qualifies for the property that they can purchase, ends up seeing the payment. The payment shock's ridiculous. And God forbid they actually go and compare that payment with what it costs to rent the exact same house. And the lenders and realtors across America hear the following phrase from buyers as the buyer bids them adieu and says, I'm going back to rent. And that phrase the professionals hear time and time again is, I'm going to wait to purchase when interest rates come down. What the buyer is obviously saying is this is insanity. The payment for this particular house is crazy. It doesn't make sense. I can save $1,000 a month by renting this exact same property. And on top of that, I've got to borrow to the very tippy top of what I can afford to actually get into this thing. So thank you, Mr. Realtor and Mr. Lender, I am out. Now having this happen time and time again, realtors and mortgage lenders got smart. They said, hey, you know what, Mr. Buyer? Why don't you marry the house and date the rate? And then think about the idea of actually divorcing that interest rate for a prettier rate down the road. They then go into a bunch of mind games with the buyer by saying things like, well, when the interest rate comes back down, then there's actually gonna be a feeding frenzy on the real estate market. And then all of a sudden there's gonna be multiple offers. You're not gonna buy the house you actually want. So why don't you get in while it's really, really quiet, while no one really wants to buy, and a lot of people are walking away from the market just like you saying, hey, you know what, I'm gonna wait till the interest rates go down. You can get in now and just refinance. That's all you need to do. A lot of people keep mentioning to me that they wanna wait for rates to drop before they buy a house. Here's why this could end up costing you money. As they say, marry the house, date the rate. It's a fun saying, what does that really mean? In 1971, the interest rates for a mortgage was 7.33. If you waited for interest rates to go down, you wouldn't have purchased a home until 1993. You would have rented for 22 years waiting for rates to go down. Meanwhile, the value of real estate quadrupled. Don't wait to buy real estate. Folks, that's a snapshot of just what I could find searching my own Facebook feed. Now folks, look at this article from Inman News. This is the leading private publication for those of us in the real estate industry world. You've never heard of it, but I would tell you majority of realtors know exactly what I'm showing you right now. Just came out and published an article that says, and I quote, does your date the rate advice constitute deceptive advertising? Says the CEO and new Inman contributor, explains how common phrase around financing interest can land your business in hot water. The article goes further and says, let's take a look at several phrases and break them down one by one to see if there's a clear path to clever and catchy phrases or a quip that could land you in hot water. Buy a home now and I can refinance you when we go into a recession and the rates go down. Buy a home now because when rates go down, there will be bidding wars and multiple offers and home prices will only go higher. Oh, buy a home now using an adjustable rate mortgage and when rates go down, I can refinance you out of an arm loan. And arm loans are going up, folks, the rate of use. The article goes on to warn that using these kinds of phrases could meet the standard of definition for deceptive advertising. And he goes on and pulls the actual law from several states through the rest of the article. Now I gotta hand it to Inman. This is a timely article because right now the Realtors Board just so happens to be facing multiple multiple lawsuits all around the country for practice related to how they charge commission. And folks, we just live in a world right now where when things are great, most people won't sue you. But when things go bad and you're no longer making 10, 20% per year in home appreciation, you just might find yourself in a civil lawsuit for some of the things you said. But folks, it's no surprise why they're telling you this because it's actually genius from their perspective. When you think about it in a world that's super anemic and needing transactions in order to survive because they can convince you to go and buy a house now and then put you in a position where you will then need to do business with the lending community again in the future. You create a whole lot of boomerang business that possibly creates opportunity for them again down the road. And keep in mind, folks, it's not free to refinance in most instances. Not to mention the fact that you also are gonna have parameters by which will limit you from refinancing at any time. Think about a person that goes and gets down payment assistance, borrows 100% of a home's value, or all of the FHA buyers, which by the way, the FHA borrowing segment is growing. There's a lot more of those being funded now 
than in the previous three years. So you have all these people coming in, depending on the loan type, you might have to make so many payments before you're allowed to refinance. You might see interest rates go where you want them to and then find out, oh, by the way, you need to make payments for another six months or a year, then you can refinance. There's home value lock-in. Just like I said, you could be borrowed to 100% of the home's value. Heck, you could put 5% down, but the lender might require that you have a 20% range of equity, which means your home has to go way up in value, all in a season of time where you may not see that equity for five years or more. I mean, think about it. In 2024 alone, Realtor.com actually predicted nationwide depreciation by nearly 2%. So you have a couple years we actually going down in value, before you actually can try and make it up that hill of 15%. But folks, the biggest problem with saying something like marry the house and date the rate is the fact that it disconnects your consciousness from what you should be thinking about as it relates to whether or not you should buy. At NestShare, we list your home for just 3%, saving you $25,000 on the sale of your property. You can trust NestShare to sell your home right and pass the savings on to you. Visit nestshare.com before you list your next home and don't let anybody you know sell before talking to us. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look at this house on the screen. This is a central Florida home. This property would probably sell somewhere around $800,000. So let's say if you were to buy this house, after you put a decent amount of money down, your mortgage amount for this house, you'd borrow, let's say, $740,000 from the bank. If you have mid-range credit, a 30-year fixed mortgage, just the principal and interest on this house would be over $5,100 a month. You'd have another $780 a month in taxes, $350 a month in home insurance, and that's being generous. And let's say a $75 a month homeowners association. The total payment on this house example here in Central Florida, over $6,300 a month is a borrower's estimated payment. Now, by the way, folks, on this exact example, this house is actually a rental. Do you know what this house rents for? $3,800 a month. So the difference to this particular buyer is a difference of $2,500. If the person decided they didn't wanna buy this house but instead rent it for $3,800 a month, they could probably rent two houses for what it costs to buy this one. And that's assuming they're putting nearly 10% down out of pocket to get a $740,000 mortgage on this property. To further ferret out the insidiousness of telling someone to do something like that. Marry the house, suck it up, you're gonna spend $30,000 more to buy that home than you would to rent one. And I could run the scenarios out. You might be saying, well, Jared, I'm in the low $300,000 price range. I'm buying below the median price for Central Florida. I'm gonna buy an entry-level priced home. You wanna know how that looks? Under those exact same numbers, a $330,000 house, your total payment would be just shy of $3,000 a month. It'd be over $2,900 a month. Do you know what it costs to rent that same house out, $1,900 a month for a nearly brand new house in the exact same area valued at the exact same amount. It's a savings of $1,000 a month, 30% more to date the rate and marry the house. So someone's spending $12,000 a year more on the bottom end scenario. Now, by the way, as a caveat, I will say for those of you that are in the first time home buyer field, if that scenario is you and you're in the low 300s, a much smarter play is builders are offering interest rates at five and five and a half percent. That would take that exact same entry price home and bring the total payment from nearly $3,000 a month to around $2,500 a month, saving you nearly $500 a month, but you're still paying $6,000 a year more to own versus rent. And maybe for you, the security, the tax write-off of the interest payment for your mortgage, there might be benefits built in, case by case, all these things are different for different people. So this isn't tax advice or anything like that, but I'm saying the benefit of even paying more might be of interest to you because you're gonna say, I'm gonna buy this house, I'm gonna own it for a really long time, and I hate renting. But folks, bringing back to the date the rate narrative, I just showed you the entry price, and I showed you the more move up range, and on both scenarios, you're paying 12 grand a year more at the bottom, you're paying 30 grand more at the top, and folks, Think about what a mortgage is. All of us in the industry love to detach your idea of home ownership and set it up in some lofty place like this is a investment, it's a luxury move. It's what the smart and sophisticated like to do. And they like to put your mind in that place. Did you know when you fund the mortgage on both of those loans, you're paying over $5,000 on that one scenario on the bigger house? Do you realize that you're paying well over 90% of your monthly payment goes to the bank 
almost all the money you're paying, which is way more than renting. They require you for the first several years of the house to pay only them and not actually pay down the loan. For sure, some part of your early payments are going to reduce the loan, but you know what I'm saying. It's hundreds of dollars on thousands that are going to them in interest by comparison. I heard early on in my real estate career that it usually took you around year 23 on a 30 year fixed to pay off half of the loan. You don't pay off half your loan till year 23. Why? Because they know that there's a likelihood that you're gonna get out of that mortgage, hand it off to another company, so they take nearly all the payment up front. Think about it. How is it different if I'm paying gobs of money and more than renting and a huge slice of that cash literally is going to a banker? Folks, think of the narrative of a mortgage. When you're doing a 30-year mortgage and the first five, six, seven, eight years, a big, big percentage of all that money is literally just buying you time for borrowing the money. It is akin to renting money. You don't actually make significant reductions on the payment of your house. And that's a problem with the date the rate thing because you're gonna go into this possibly for multi years and paying much, much higher than it costs to rent. All to find out, you gotta start the amortization cycle all over. You're then again later down the road 30 years from actually starting the process of paying your house off. And the lenders love it when you come in day one, scrap your old loan that you've been paying on for three or four years, which was a ton of interest, and restart the process on day one with lender number two, who says, here we go, you're starting over again, you're giving a huge percentage of these monthly payments just to the bank. Folks, one of the biggest pieces of advice that you need to know if you're buying a home in 2024 or 2025 and you're considering the narrative that you're buying the home and you know that this is not the lifelong rate you will have because ultimately the best advice you could take is actually get a loan that you can keep for 30 years. And the only way to do that is to get the seller involved in the negotiations of that purchase to pay a lot of money to the points on your loan or essentially paying a hefty fee to bring today's rate of 7% or whatever it is down to 5% or five and a half. And that could be a significant sum of money. It could be forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. But I'm telling you what, folks, I think we're going into an economy where sellers will probably start to negotiate more because one thing you can depend on in the housing market, at least in Florida, is you are going to see more homes hitting more sellers come into the market and a lot of them need to negotiate and they're going to want to sell and you have the opportunity to say, hey, look, I will buy, but I need a buy down on my interest rate. But the secondary piece and very important is if you don't get the rate you want up front, you're saying, hey, I am the date the rate person. You need 1000% clarity on just how many payments you're gonna to have to make in order to swap that rate. If there's any equity requirements, if your home must go up in value and appreciate beyond where you start, you need to know what those things are and you need to be realistic about just how long it could take to get there. And because all these things are true, if you're thinking of selling a home in Florida, you are going to need the lowest cost, excellent service to sell your home. And home sellers in Florida should check out nestshare.com where you can list your home for just 3%, 3% total for full broker support, high definition photography, and great broker support from one of the top brokerages in the United States by your side to the end, and all for just 3% so you can sell your home and keep your equity. Visit nestshare.com if you're interested, and let's continue the conversation below. Have you heard the idea of date the rate? What do you think about buying in 2024? And how do things look in the marketplaces that you find yourself in right now. I want to hear about it in the comments and I'll see you there.